when we run our model, we can get results that we can see in in this set of uh, figures here. This is not the right way to do the analysis because you are supposed to do some replications and get uh, average values at least. And along with that, you should get in confidence intervals for the KPIs you want to explore. But as a first approach, we can have a long simulation, a long run, and have a first approach to the values corresponding to how our system performs and in particular to our costs. So we have a set of values here that we can look at. One is the accumulated med demand, which is the total product which we've delivered to the customers that have arrived to our system. In our case, it is 538. Okay. Second, we have the unmet demand. So if we have customers that were demanding something from us and we don't have enough products in our warehouse to meet our demand, that would be computed here. That, was, that hasn't been the case because we've had enough inventory in this situation. And then we have both the inventory position and the on-hand inventory. The on-hand inventory is the amount of products we have in our warehouse, which are the entities we have in this station, which are 62. So since we were in the past about to run out of stock, we, we reached the reorder point. We placed an order for, remember, <clears throat> this lot size, which is 1,000 products. And that is represented in this entity here, traveling from the supplier to our warehouse and containing 1,000 entities or 1,000 products. So we are in a situation where we have 1,000 products about to be received on transient inventory plus the 62 we have in our warehouse. If that's why the summation of both is 1,062. We can see that this is the graph for the evolution of those two uh, inventory values. At the beginning they were coinciding and at some point when we reached <clears throat> an inventory level of 300, this blue line it went all the way up to 1,000 1, uh, something. One this something is 300 because we had 300 plus the 1,000 that we ordered and they evolved in, in, a, in a similar manner, exactly the same variation, until we receive this 1,000. And at that point, what we will have is that these two values coincide because everything we have is in our warehouse. So I'm going to run the model for a while and then we are. We have the exact value both for the inventory position and for the inventory on hand. And these two lines coincide again. If we keep running the model, we can see that customer, well, it goes too fast, so we don't see customers arriving here, but we see that these lines evolve and we go to a point where again we reached that 300 products level and we placed a new order. Okay? That is how our system is in this situation in terms of uh, the med demand so far, the unmet demand, zero in this case, and the inventory and on hand, the inventory position and the on hand inventory we have. Okay, let's go and see the costs. We have costs for ordering, for not meeting our demand, for holding or carrying our inventory, and for buying the materials we want to, to have in our warehouse to meet our demand. And this is the summation of all these four components. So let's see these two columns. We have an average, daily average, and the total cost so far for these four elements. So this, uh, you can get this, say, 6.8, dividing this by the runtime so far. So this is the daily cost, and this is the total time so far. Okay. So in our case, the ordering is a 100 euros. Remember that the cost per an order was 50, so that means we've placed two orders so far. If we run the model and we wait for another order to be placed, which will again happen when we reach 300 here, okay, we have three orders placed, so that means our ordering cost is three times 550, which is 150 we see here. And this is the average. We haven't had any stock out, but if we had uh, any customers on set, we would be multiplying that one euro per item of a product or no delivery. We'll see that in, in a minute. And we have the holding cost, which is the cost for having this uh, uh, product stored here. And this is computed by means of using this uh, holding cost, which is one cent per currency and per day. 
and finally we have the material. Since we have placed three orders with our supplier and we are ordering 1,000 products every time we place an order, that means we, are, we have placed so far a total amount of three um, times um, 100, which is 1,000, sorry, which is 3,000 parts we've bought to our supplier. And we are paying 10 euros for every product. So that means that this is the total amount of money we're paying or we have paid to our supplier. And this is the average, the daily average. And these final values here are the summation of, of that. Okay. And finally, we have some KPIs regarding service level. So what we have here is the fill rate, order fill rate, and cycle service level. So far, we've met all our demands, so these three values are set to 100. Um, you want to get more information about what these elements are, you can check a playlist where I explained this about inventory management. And um, let's do an, an, an exercise. I'm going to modify the reorder points. I'm going to use 100 instead. That means that we're going to place an order when we reach 100. Since we have this lead time, what we expect to happen is that what we receive from the, the supplier is received late and we will have some level of unmet demand and we'll see the corresponding stock out cost in, in this row here. So we we'll run the model and now we see or we'll see that when we reach this point, there we are, it's when we place the order and we have this flat part of our curve representing that there were customers that were um, that left the system uh, unserved. So now we have stock out, which is computed here. In exchange, we could check that we have a holding cost that is lower. So the point is whether this is worth doing or not. Okay. So we can fast forward our model, and we are going to run it for one whole year. And we can see this progress bar that tells us that we are approaching 50% and, and, and so on. So after a long run, we can have this average, and we can compare it this it's a good situation when, when, when we look at it in, in comparison with what we had previously, we had done the number. So we can do this kind of um, analysis. Again, this is not the, 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 the right way to do it. We have to, to run the model for, for a several number of applications, for replications, and, and get some as very more um, accurate estimates. And at least you get to know the error or the maximum error we are um, doing or making if, if we do uh, those number of replications. But to get a first hint of how things are, we could do as I've done uh, with this model uh, and that you can find in, in the link uh, in the playlist.